What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Episode 2 here, first real episode, as we'll get to see our first taste of regular season gameplay. Gotta set our season goal here to start out this brand new campaign. I am super pumped to do this series, and if you guys are too, please like the video, consider subscribing. I have two series going on currently in Madden 24, and if you're not subscribed, I think you'll like them. So I think, realistically speaking, make the playoffs is probably what I'm going to go with. Our team is very good. I highlighted our team at the start of the season. I'll show you guys again the roster so you can see what your Toronto Thunderbirds, that's right, the Toronto Canadian Thunderbirds are going to be working with. And I got to say, I appreciate all who commented uh, in episode one. I did say if you wanted to join the SFL as a created player, that I would add you, add you to the league if you commented and I will do that every single episode I already got three people who commented I'll show you guys some of the new additions to the SFL here in a moment and if you guys would like to join the league comment down below the, the name you'd like to use for your player what position you want him to be maybe the height the weight skin tone appearance stuff like that the college that you went to and then also if you would like what team you want to play for as well so let's meet my three new subscriber players that are going to be joining the sfl today first he is a wide receiver for the virginia beach blues here in the nfc south six foot one 180 pounds out of oregon yeezy fuentes hopefully i'm pronouncing that last name right shout out at david fuentes 7590 in the comments you are going to be wide receiver for the Virginia Beach Blues, 82 overall rated uh, star development. So he's a young receiver, 22 years old, two years in the league. It would not let me edit the experience because I didn't actually create these players. I just edited already pre-made characters, but young receiver going to be battling with uh, reps with Jordan Addison. Very fast at 95 speed, can also accelerate down the field at a high level, catching the ball pretty good, and he's also... A pretty developed route runner as well. Got good change of direction. So some really good traits to like. We don't actually play the Virginia Beach Blues so in this first season here. But rest assured, we will track your progress and see how you do here in the inaugural season of the SFL. Second, we have a young two-year player out of Oklahoma, Michael Jakin. Again, hopefully I'm pronouncing that name correct here. Shout out H Musculus in the comments. This one is for you, brother. You are going to be behind Justin Herbert. Now, I thought Jay Herbo was going to be injured. He was injured in the preseason, but it looks like he is healthy. So Michael Jakin is going to be quarterback number two. If you'd like me to move you to a different team, since they do have Herbert, just let me know and I can definitely do that. But getting a look at the young player here, six foot one, 198 pounds out of Oklahoma. Also star development at an 80 rated overall. He's got some really good qualities that you would like to see in a young quarterback. Absolute cannon for an arm at 95 throw power. Also some pretty good accuracy, especially in that short range of the field. You know, 5 to 10 yards. He's very accurate. Can throw under pressure, has good awareness, but a pretty good speed demon. So got to look to see if uh, Michael Jenkins is going to be scrambling with his Lamar Jackson-esque talents that he possesses. 92 speed. 92 acceleration 80 agility a lot that you would like out of a young quarterback a lot to develop there and again justin herbert is here so i hope maybe he'll get injured who knows he got injured in real life he was injured in the preseason but if you would like me to move you to a different team just let me know and i can make that happen and last but not least our afc east division rival lumberjacks who we actually play today first game of the season and we play them twice per year. Backup tight end to Noah Fant, but very close overall. So I could definitely see some position battles happening there. Rookie out of North Carolina, James Briner. Shout out at Nagram3466 in the comments. You are gonna be on our AFC East Division rival team, Austin Lumberjacks. Good tight end, rookie. So obviously very young, 22 years old. Also star development, 75 rated overall. And this tight end here is pretty good at blocking. Um, he's a good run blocker. He's a pretty good pass blocker as well. Good lead blocker, great impact block. So stick him in some I-form sets 
you know, and some uh, some uh, 13 personnel sets, I should say. And he should be able to open up some running lanes and also protect the quarterback as well. Not the most polished route runner, but he's decently fast for a tight end. He can catch the ball. He can also catch in traffic and he can accelerate downfield. So James Briner could be tight end number two on this Austin Lumberjacks team, but also could be tight end number one, depending on how Noah Fant plays. And matter of fact, since we're playing the Austin Lumberjacks in the first game of the season here, let's just go ahead and meet their team and see what we're up against. Anthony Richardson is here, but he's injured. So Marcus Mariota gonna be the man under center along with Clayton Toon. Not really too much to look forward to in the quarterback room until AR comes back. They got David Montgomery, they got Zach Moss, and an aging Cordero Patterson. So Montgomery, pretty good option. Derek Parrish, the rookie at fullback. And then wide receivers, they got Calvin Ridley, Brandon Cooks, Rondell Moore. They got Jakeem Grant, but he's hurt. Jalen Hyatt. So, I mean, Calvin Ridley, I guess he's a number one option. I would say right now, probably more of a number two if anything, same with Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks maybe even a number three option. So no real crazy target to keep your eyes on downfield. Just mentioned, but again, no offense here. And rookie James Briner going to be the backup tight end to go along with Charlie Werner. Offensive line, they got Charles Cross at left tackle. Pretty good up and coming player. Matthew Bergeron, the rookie, is at left guard. Connor McGovern, but he's hurt. So the Lumberjacks kind of stricken with some injuries as... A lot of teams around the league are. Again, I mentioned I did forget to turn off pre-existing injuries, but it's fine. Adds to the realism of things. So Nick Gates is going to be the center. Tevin Jenkins, pretty good guard. Not great, but decent. And Trey Pipkins is going to be the right tackle. And oh, that's right. This is the team that put all the stock into defense. I remember this. So we're going to have no time to throw the ball today. Going to get sacked a lot. Nick Bosa on the defensive end. To go along with Derek Brown, great one-two punch. And then Sexy Dexy in the middle. So we got Dexter Lawrence, X-Factor, and we got Nick Bosa, X-Factor, to deal with. So our quarterback, who you'll see in a moment, if you don't know who it is, going to be faced with some tough adversity back there. Linebackers, okay. They got Zach Bond, Quay Walker, a really good player. And if you don't know, I'm a huge Packers fan, so I do like me some Quay Walker. Zaire Franklin. He's pretty good as well. On the right side for the linebackers, they got Marcus Davenport, but he's injured. So Nick Hampton, the rookie out of App State, it's going to be on the right side. Tariq Woolen, pretty good corner. He's very, very fast. 98 speed. So I'm sure he's going to be able to keep up with our receivers. MJ Emerson of the Cleveland Browns is here. Pretty good second option. They got Zach Jones, Nick McLeod, and then my guy Troy Pride, who is sitting there at a nice 69 rated overall. Andre Cisco is the free safety. Kirby Joseph is the strong safety. So secondary is, you know, okay, I guess. Harrison Butker, who just won himself a Super Bowl ring in real life, is the kicker. And Pat O'Donnell is going to be the punter. So that is the Austin Lumberjacks, who we will see two times per year. Now let's take a look at your Toronto Thunderbirds and re-familiarize you guys with the team. A man under center, my guy, Jay Love. I'm telling you, watch out for this guy. He had a what I would consider a breakout season in real life, only normal dev, but they did bump his overall up, deservedly so, to an 82 rated overall. So let's see how Jordan Love will develop in this franchise series here. We got Kyron Williams, great up and coming running back, Kareem Hunt, always a solid number two option. Also, Melvin Gordon. And then we got Kyle Juszczyk. Great player. As long as we don't go into an overtime game, he should be fine. <laughs> Hopefully, that's not too soon for all my 49ers fans out there. Receiving room, pretty good. We got Chris Olave. Zay Jones is our number two option. MVS, who also just won himself a ring as well. Hopefully, he's not dropping balls like he was in the beginning stages of the regular season in real life, Marquise Goodwin mainly got him for speed. He is a speed demon. And then our offensive line, I like a couple holes, but Trent Williams, one of the best in the business. Joe Tooney, who don't think he played in the Super Bowl, but he still got himself a ring. So a lot of former Chiefs here. Ryan Kelly, the center. Graham Glasgow, the guard. Could, will, will definitely probably look to upgrade that position. Donovan Smith is the right tackle. And then Darren Waller and Logan Thomas and Ricky Seals-Jones. Decent tight end slash receiver room. 
I like it. And if you haven't been able to tell by now, yes, I did do a fantasy draft. So all the players are mixed up. Defense, we are good, but man, I just realized we are old. We are definitely old. Starting out with the secondary, we got Antoine Winfield. He's not that old, but Antoine Winfield is the free safety. Jordan Poyer getting up there in years, still superstar X Factor, or sorry, superstar, but still playing at a high level, but he is getting old. And then with the exception of DJ Reed Jr., our corners, they're like all 13-year vets. We got Pat Peterson. We got Marcus Peters. We got Jason Verrett. We got good old Janoris Jackrabbit Jenkins. So we need some young corners. That's something I'm going to have to get like yesterday. Linebackers, again, they're good, but also kind of old. Bobby Wagner, Legion of Boom, he's here, but he is definitely, definitely getting up there in years. Same with Denzel Perryman and also JPP. He's about... I think 13 years in the league too. Zach Cunningham, still pretty young. And then Yaya Diaby is the rookie. Defensive line, I mean, needs no introduction, but your defensive player of the year, to many people's dismay, I will say, Miles Garrett is here. The big 355 pounder Michael Pierce as the defensive tackle. Shelby Harris, pretty good option. And then the longtime vet, Brandon Graham. But special teams, man, oh man, are we good. Justin Tucker and AJ Cole does not get too much better than that. We got Pat Pete doing kick returns. I mean, I'll keep that for right now, but I feel like we could do better in that option. I don't know. And then our specialty players are nickel and dime defense and things of that nature. So this is your Toronto Thunderbirds. I like the team. Let me know what you guys think about him in the comments. Beat the Lumberjacks today and throw for 350 plus yards. Can we do that? Can Jordan Love prove that he is an elite quarterback in not the NFL, but the SFL? We're taking on the Austin Lumberjacks. AFC East, you see, we got the Melbourne Dreadnoughts. We got the Austin Lumberjacks, the Brooklyn Nighthawks, and then your Toronto Thunderbirds. Really like this team, the way they look. And I got to show you guys the alternate jerseys because we are rocking those puppies today i really really like them looks like the tampa bay buccaneers creamsicle but man are they clean and we're gonna start off this first game of the league in style so if you guys are fired up for monday night prime time oh my god monday night prime time here in the sfl please like the video subscribe for future and more weekly madden 24 content and without further ado let's get down to lumberjack field in austin and get ready for the game. Get a look at the Creamsicle Thunderbirds. Man, oh man, are we clean. We are down here in sunny Austin, and there are the Lumberjacks. Like the little flannel behind the helmet. That's pretty slick. Every team in this league is a now relocated fake team. So I'm really, really excited to see, you know, the different teams, the logos, what the jerseys look like. I've only ever messed around with, you know, some uh, of the relocation options, and we see... A lot of the, we're going to see a lot of the teams down there on the score ticker as well. So Thunderbirds going to get the ball to start here. Patrick Peterson, not sure if he should be back there returning kicks and taking hits at this stage of his career. Thought it was going to be a good return, but only to the 26. Going to take me a while to learn these this Bills playbook. We used to be the Buffalo Bills. So going to take me a while to learn the Bills playbook and also these uh, players and their numbers not used to playing with them at all let's go ahead and check it down to kyron williams to start here just gonna let jordan love get settled in but a gain of one not exactly what i would call getting settled in so definitely gonna have to move the ball downfield i am playing 10 minute quarters but you guys will not see the whole gameplay i'll be making some edits here and there stuff like that so it'll be about a 40 something minute video that's what i usually try to keep it as so let's see what we could do here on second and 11. I see somebody getting open in the flat. That is MVS. Marquez Valdez Scantling getting very close to the third down marker. I do try to rock coach suggestions. I'm not really seeing anything I like too much. So I guess we'll just go out of the eye form here. Definitely not going to run towards Dexter Lawrence. That would be a bad idea. Kyron Williams straight up the gut. Getting four yards and moving the chains for the T-Birds. I'm out of single back here with Jordan Love. A little bunch formation to the right. See who wants to get open here. And didn't like anything downfield. And what did I say pregame? Dexter Lawrence and this defensive line 
is definitely going to be a problem. Second and nine coming out empty this time. See who wants to get open here and almost sacked again. Believe that was Dexter Lawrence and that was Derek Brown that time. But this defensive line for the L Jacks going to be a problem. Early adversity here. Early adversity indeed. Going to need about a miracle and then some if we hope to pick this up. And Valdez Scantling was open, but I did not really lead him the right way. If you got, if anybody watches my St. Louis Sentinels franchise, you will know I'm not the best Madden player. Don't ever claim to be. I would say I'm decent at best. Definitely not on the competitive level, but I'm definitely more of a content creator, but I do my thing in Madden. If you haven't watched Sentinels franchise, go check it out. Got a pretty good record. And last season, I think we came within, yeah, one game of the Super Bowl. So it was something. Now, wait a second. Wait a gold darn minute. Anthony Richardson shouldn't be playing. He is playing. Was was he not hurt? Did you guys not see that? I swear he was hurt. Yeah. Okay. That was very strange. Okay. Marcus Mariota is in the backfield, although they were showing, uh, what's his name? Anthony Richardson and already a huge play from David Montgomery. 34 yards on the rush. That is not what you like to see. Somehow, Miles Garrett of all people got out there but man oh look i was all discombobulated and i was all flustered because i'm like why is anthony richardson out here they were even showing him my man got in the huddle left and then gave the ball to marcus mariota don't know what that was about but okay noah fant makes the catch there and gotta watch out for tight end number 85 james briner see what kind of impact he can make in this game we're gonna come out blitz but quickly audible to man here Confident this will be a run to Montgomery, which it is not. It's a play fake, and Mariota has the tight end there, and that is James Briner, the rookie out of North Carolina. Subscriber on this channel, making his first SFL debut catch, and it was a decent one, putting the Lumberjacks in a third and manageable. So let's see if we can possibly maybe get some pressure on Mariota. No, it's going to be a diving catch there. Diving catch by Brandon Cooks and offensive lineman Trey Pipkins goes down. Maybe I wish AR was in the lineup because Marcus Mariota is playing like a freaking man possessed here. We'll see. It's going to be another play fake. And I'm looking. Mariota scrambling. And Miles Garrett going to be calling his name a lot. A lot, I presume. The defensive player of the year. The depoy on our team. And I hope that he gets defensive player of the year in this franchise i don't want i don't want tj watt to get it i don't want micah parsons to get it gotta watch david montgomery on the outside and tons of t-birds back there to make the tackle alliteration at its finest tons of t-birds making the tackle third and 12 upcoming i like man coverage in this one i really do see if we can possibly hold the l jacks to a field goal and it looks like it is going to be a field goal cordero patterson caught it but he was well Short of the planes. Bend but don't break from this very stellar but very old defense, I will say. And Harrison Butker going to come in for the chip shot. It is good. And now we just got to move the ball on offense. Again, man, telling you it's going to be really hard to run the ball on this team. And also probably, matter of fact, I need Kyron Williams to block. Because Nick Bosa is over there looking like he's ready to end Jordan Love's existence. And I don't want him to. And that's going to be picked. Pick right off the bat there by backup free safety Bobby McCain. I was eyeing down Olave the entire time. And opening <laughs> opening possessions of the game not going well for the T-Birds at all. And got to make sure we turn it around and turn it around quick because we don't want to lose our inaugural game. Yaya Diaby going to stop Cordero Patterson there for a gain of four. It's going to take me a while, guys. To learn these players here i'm used to my guys over on uh sentinels franchise so much different world here in the sfl but that's okay and blocking is superb for montgomery and he is going to get in and just like that austin l jack's going to take a 10 nothing lead and we got to freaking figure it out and figure it out soon last play before the end of the first quarter i would presume let's make it a good one slot man randall cobb out there there we go okay Hanging on to the pass, making it third and extremely manageable. Love and Cobb never really got to see that combo in Green Bay because when Aaron Rodgers jetted, no pun intended, Randall Cobb and others 
went along with him. So Lumberjacks are killing us, killing us, killing us in the rushing department. And uh, we're going to have to turn that around. No better place to start than third and one. But we got to make sure that Nick Bosa and Dexter Lawrence and those guys are blocked. Nice shifty move there by Kyron Williams. Thought that we were going to be stopped in the backfield. And we were not. So we do live to fight another down. You love to see that. And hey, if we score a touchdown here, right back in this ballgame, nothing to worry about indeed. Just got to make sure that Jordan Love actually has some time back there. Back shoulder throw to Darren Waller. Led him a little bit too far. Come out single back from the 45. You're going to be a little play. Oh, God, I have pressure instantly, and I'm going to get caught. called for grounding. This defensive front for the Lumberjacks, it's not fun. They are not they are not pleasant customers to deal with. Let me tell you what. And now what in the heck do we do on third and 21? I mean, obviously, we throw a pass. There's no doubt about that. But just don't like our odds here. I think we put Kyron Williams on a wheel. If I could get one of those linebackers to kind of follow him. Actually, streak sounds better. Might have Olave up the middle of the field potentially and maybe he's running for it look at chris look at chris okay threw it over the head of Tariq woolen Tariq woolen is very fast too but jordan love dropped it in the bucket 47 yard completion to chris olave and that is exactly what the t-birds needed now let me flip this play here because i want yeah i need a little hole there on the right side, I'm going to run it away from Nick Bosa. Give me something. Kyron dancing. Kyron scoring. Putting on his dancing shoes. Channeling his inner Kevin Bacon. Getting into the, the end zone here of here in Lumberjack Field. Lumberjack Stadium. And how about that clutch on the response? Definitely needed that. Now we just got to play defense. David Montgomery. Okay. Averaging 17.6 yards per carry. That needs to stop right now. Will not be acceptable. Coach Damon Sanders will not allow that sort of tomfoolery to take place here. Got to put a stop to it right now. And someone needs to guard Brandon Cooks because there wasn't anybody within about 20 yards of him. For those who are curious, all Madden difficulty sliders are at the 50 defaults that they are typically set at here. And that's the same thing I play in Sentinels franchise. And man, oh man, Marcus Mariota is looking like Marcus Mariota in Oregon. He's never looked this good. Never looked this good. All right, come on, T-Birds. Bobby Wagner, LaMarcus Joyner. We got these veterans here. Veteran presences on the team. And thank God. Mariota overthrew Cordero Patterson because that was going to be a house call. Now, if we can somehow stop him here, not sure that they're going to be in Harrison Butker field goal range. So <laughs> this could be our chance. This could be our one chance that we need. Let's please pay it off and make it work. Crash on Mariota. Thank you, LaMarcus Joyner. We'll see if Butker does come out. It will be a very long field goal if he does. And they are going to send him out. So kicking from virtually the logo here, Harrison Bucker does have the leg. Let's see if he has the accuracy. And he does. But that's all right. Good defensive stand. And if we score a touchdown here, guess what? We're in the lead. Going to come out screen game again. This pass rush is hot and heavy. Potential four down territory. Maybe. Oh, Kyron needs some blockers. He's got it. Can we shake him, man? Nice move from Kyron. Please don't fumble it because you will get cut. Huh? Ooh, Olave getting pressed. So someone's going to get open here. If I send Olave on a streak and then I send Kyron Williams on an out and then I send Valda Scantling on a drag, somebody will get open here, I presume. And uh, I think it's, well, it's going to be MVS. It's not really what I wanted to happen. I mean, my first read was Olave getting pressed on the outside. Didn't really get open, at least not to my liking. Um, but, I mean, we did pick up something positive, so I guess you can't be too mad. I'm going to streak Olave here. Also got some drags working. And let's just see what materializes. Wide open receiver. It's Darren Waller, the tight end. Thought he stepped out of bounds. Apparently, he did keep his feet in. T-Birds are moving. 
with a chance to take the lead before halftime. And now we are playing some good foosball here. So can I get some blocks? I am about sick of Dexter Lawrence. I kind of like PA crossers. Coach is suggesting it as well, but we are going to need some protection if this is going to work. And Olave is open. Come on, Chris. Oh, he had it. Oh, he had it and dropped it. Oh, my goodness. Chris Olave was about to be my new BFF. I mean, look at that. Where do you want it, brother? Where do you want it? Must have felt the rush coming. Took his eyes off the ball for a split second. Kirby Joseph was in the vicinity. And that could have been a game changer. Not going to go for it here. That would be dumb. Just going to take my points and hope and pray that our defense can uh, not allow more points before the half. We got this slowed down kicking arc from Jay Tuck, which I really, really uh, enjoy and appreciate. And we do put three points on the board. So opening half here, first half of the season, I would say some peaks and some valleys. But overall, we're keeping it close. 13 to 10. Now there's still tons of time. Teams in Madden love to turn the Jets on in the last two minutes of the game. But one, I mean, really, if we can get a great defensive stand or a turnover, we could even get the ball back. So what do you guys think of the SFL so far? What would you like to see me do different? In the next episode, what would you like to see me add? Let me know, and I'd be more than happy to implement whatever you guys want implemented. Come on, someone get to Mariota. Fumble that ball, Marcus. Thought he was gonna. He had tons of T-Birds on him there, but he was short-handed. Mariota can run. We know that to be true. Mariota definitely can run, so always, always got to be cognizant of that. I want Miles Garrett to get a sack. Come on. He's right there. Oh, missed him. Missed him. Crash. Crash on Mariota. Mariota is going to move the chains. A couple chances to get him off the field, but just weren't able to capitalize, and that is very unfortunate as now they're driving here. Two timeouts, and they're getting very close to field goal range, but it's Pat Pete. That is the interception that we needed. Perfect timing. User pick from your boy here. Patrick Peterson, all pro level corner, been doing this for a very, very long time. Mariota was targeting Calvin Ridley, but Pat Pete was right there to read it the whole time. And now we are in prime, prime position here. Don't need to go quick. Don't need to play hero ball. We're going to go draw play straight up the middle for Kyron Williams. We still got a minute. We still got three timeouts. Last thing I want is for the uh, Lumberjacks to get the ball back again. So I'm okay with shaving off some of this clock here. Don't mind that at all one bit. Let's see if we can make possibly anything happen. There's Kyron. Need you to hold on to that ball, Bubba. Okay, coach is saying screen pass again. With all three timeouts, a pass rush that we know is just chomping at the bit to get back to Jordan Love there. Already close to field goal range. I do like screen pass as the call. And Kyron Williams is not even going to have to use one of those timeouts as he does get out of bounds all three timeouts don't need to play hero ball and don't need to be taking end zone shots and stuff like that Kyron on the draw is a pretty good option and now we're going to go ahead and call a timeout all right here we go second and six balls on the 28 who's going to get open on this play i think it's valdez scantling it is valdez scantling valdez scantling gets very close we're going to go ahead and call a timeout again I know there's 19 seconds left, but I want to make sure that we're calling the right play here. I'm going to go back, draw play to Williams, just because we do have one timeout. Uh, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm going with my gut. Kyron looking for touchdown number two. And he was so close. Got to call timeout here. Second and goal. We got time for probably an end zone shot. Or two. I like why stick to Olave. Coach did suggest it as well. This is a good play to call in the end zone. Oh, Chris is so open and J-Love finds him. So now, now we're seeing the T-Birds. Don't worry about that first quarter. Look, it's a new team. Just getting used to everything. Getting used to our surroundings. Don't even worry about that at all. Still got a whole second half of football to play. I realized that also Graham Glasgow just got injured so 
Go get yourself a shot and a pill, whatever you need to do, and get back on the field. But right now, the Thunderbirds are playing great. Getting a look around the league. Here is the SFL. Beautiful, beautiful picture. Virginia Blues, who I just added a subscriber to that team. Virginia Blues getting the dub over the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods. So you love to see that. And I just love it. I love the SFL. The, what did I make them? The Paris Black Knights against the Louisville Desperados. I'm trying to learn it still. So the Louisville Desperados get the dub over the Paris Black Knights. And then the Anchorage Snowhawks get the dub over the Salt Lake City Bisons. Mariota and his gang starting out in the single back. We got Bobby Wagner here, man in the middle. So hopefully he can keep eyes on Montgomery. And of course... I made the focus defend outside run, and what does Montgomery do? First play of the half, if you said run it inside, you are correct. Now, we're coming out pressure, but I am going to audible it into man coverage. Mariota just loves coming out empty in this game for whatever reason. I need Miles Garrett to generate a pass rush. Big play down the field, and he overthrew David Montgomery, who was running like a little wheel there, I presume. And we already got... The Lumberjacks in a big, big key third down here. So let's pin our ears back and get them off of the field. Please not going to happen because wide open is Brandon Cooks. He has kind of been a weapon today, I would say. Following the 16-yard gain, we are going pressure here. Mariota just loves coming out empty. And how about another pick? Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was almost Patrick Peterson's second. And he just did the little lumberjack celebration. <laughs> Possibly uh, taunting the opposing team. I don't know. I like it. Let's get the boys fired up. Get them ready to play some good football. Mariota crash on him. There we go, baby. Leonard Floyd with the sack. T-Bird starting to show up. Got the uh, lumberjacks in a big, big third down. So we're guessing pass. We're shading over top here and just need to play good defense. That's all we need to do. Patrick Peterson, I'm going to have him drop back in coverage. It's going to be out of bounds. And the Toronto Thunderbirds come up big on the opening drive of the second half. Jordan Love did play good in the first half, so we're going to come out play fake, see if he can keep some of this momentum going. Oh, my God, I messed up so bad. Had so many open receivers, but it's okay. I had Yves check on the flat, missed him. I had Darren Waller leaking out, missed him. But guess what? Didn't, mi didn't miss Chris Olave. I rolled out there with Jordan Love, and that little rollout gave us just the time that we needed. Now, could be... Okay, let me think here. Let me think here. How about... Could just be a deep shot to Olave. Kind of like... The sound of that. Let's go to Olave. High point the ball up to him. Chris, make a ooh. <laughs> Little heat check there for Olave. Can't blame me for it. Don't want to punt the ball back to him, though. So let's try our best to pick this one up here. Maybe Darren Waller. Diving catch. And Waller gets it. Had to pass lead him on that one. But Darren Waller is always a viable option. And that is just what... The T-Birds needed here in deep, deep, deep into Lumberjacks territory. Let's see if we can continue this. Get somebody open. Oh, Zay Jones is so open. Need a block. Oh, he's still going. Okay. Okay. Getting the ball all the way down to the three. You love to see it. I definitely like the defense that the Lumberjacks are coming out. And also like their end zone too. That's pretty, pretty slick. I would say Kyron. Was that Dexter Lawrence again? I freaking hate this guy. Do we give to Williams or hit MVS? We're going to hit MVS. Oh, need a block. MVS, power through. He got it. That was an RPO. That was an RPO. Risky, risky play. But MVS catches it. Not really known for those little bubble screens. Marquez Valdez-Scantling is definitely a burner and a deep threat. But you know what? Does not matter. We're going to use him on this team however we see fit. And we are going to go up 11, playing very, very good football to start the second half. Mariota coming out shotgun, three wide receivers, and Cordero Patterson to his right. And that is going to be, is that Brandon Cooks again? Brandon Cooks is a weapon in this game. Five for 50, I mean, 
Okay, he's kind of a weapon. He's kind of a weapon. He's uh, like a blunt object. I would say not, you know, a firearm or something like that. But he's he's a blunt object for sure. Bobby Wagner on the blitz. Oh, my God. Brandon Cook. Okay, he is a firearm. He is a firearm now. I'm sorry. He is definitely doing his thing. All right, come on, D. Come on, D. Need you to step up. Another pick from Patrick Peterson or something like that would be great. Nope. Just a wheel route to Cordero Patterson, picking up 10. I feel like man coverage has worked probably the best so far in this one. So we're going to go man again, and that's pro probably a catch from Ridley. Oh, my God. He just absolutely mossed me on that one. Wasn't even close. That was Pat Pete. Can't be too mad at him. He did have, uh, obviously, that pick earlier. So, you know, give and take when you got an aggressive corner like that. But that was just a great, great catch there by Ridley. And now the Lumberjacks are in prime scoring position. So definitely still a lot of football left to go. There's Montgomery. We were able to get him there. Jordan Poyer making initial contact. All right, come on, boys. Come on, boys. Someone get Cordero. Ooh, Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner met him at the point of contact. And Cordero looks a little bit shaken up, man. Might have to put my man in the blue tent. And now the Lumberjacks are going zero wide receivers. So I am going 60 out Jacks Blitz. I always call this play in this situation. And oh my God, it's a play fake. Somebody please get to Mariota. That was a good play call. If that would have been a run, that would have been a loss of about four. Got to be careful because they're about to cut it to a, probably a three point game. And that means we cannot take our foot off the gas. Great catch by Calvin Ridley. Two-point conversion is good. Got to make sure we respond on this drive. Don't want to give the l Jacks any extra momentum. And there's Zay Jones. Think that's the first time we called his name, I want to say. When I played that little preseason game in episode one, Zay Jones was looking like the real deal. And I believe that's the first time we called his name. But it was a great time to call it. And oh my God, do I audible? Nope, nope, nope. I was going to, I see players getting pressed on the left. I was going to audible into some streaks or something like that, but not going to do it. Just going to take the safe option to Kyron Williams, picking up four up the middle, getting very, very close here to the end of the third. Coach says screen pass again. I do like that as well. Kyron Williams has been playing very good. Doing a good job on these screens as long as we don't take a sack here. And oh my God, Dexter Lawrence is everywhere. Dexter Lawrence, you are the bane of my freaking existence. I think shallow dig is the right call here. Might have Darren Waller on. Yep, that's what I want. Please hang on to it, Waller. Whoo. Got it by about a half of a pubic hair there, but it was exactly what we needed. And that is going to take us to the end of the fourth. So we're driving pretty good here. Pretty much. I mean, we have Justin Tucker. So you and I have that slow down kicking meter. So you might as well say that we are in field goal range, but got to definitely get a touchdown here. Right. I mean, the way that the Lumberjacks drove on that last drive would not be confident to only kick three here. Let's send Zay Jones in motion. Kyron Williams is going to test this left side. Definitely don't want to run towards Sexy Dexy in them. And Williams has space. Good inside run there. Picking up 10, moving the chains. Second and 12 here behind the sticks. Got to make a play here. Got to see who's going to get open. And it is going to be. No, that's a bad pass. Oh, my God. Almost picked by Quay Walker. Third and 12 here. I mean, probably in field goal range, but... We take a sack here or something like that it could be bad news bears so maybe olave up the middle again oh we hit him on this play earlier come on chris now ryan kelly our center gets injured okay i mean 56 yarder for tucker should be money in the bank especially since we get this slowed down kicking arc justin tucker has pretty much infinite range but that is only going to make it a, what, six-point game, right? Six-point game, five-point game. I missed the score. Six-point game. So if Austin scores and obviously gets the extra point, they will go up by one. Still a lot of time left. 
but got to lock in. Miles Garrett had that one sack, but that was it. So I need him to do a little bit more. It looks like the receiver there, Rondell Moore, got bumped on his route. And that's going to bring up third and five, a big one at that. So the question is, can we get these Austin Lumberjacks off of the field? We're going to guess pass. We're going to shade inside. And it's a drop. It's a drop. Pat P on the coverage. Three and out for Austin. That is exactly what we needed. Now, slow, long, methodical drive. Preferably the ends in a touchdown. But I would even take a field goal on this one. Because really, I just want to make it a two-score game. Nice juke there, too, by Peterson. How about Jordan Love? 287 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. I was going to say I can't play scared. Can't just be content to, you know, run the ball, play conservative, stuff like that. We got to we gotta actually make some moves here. And I don't think the move, maybe Zay Jones. I'm going to audible this to HB Blast. I do not like... Nick Bosa and Dexter Lawrence are not my friends right now. I do not like them at all. Kyron with a nice hole, picking up 10, and he is now at 16 for 59. So a shaky first half for Kyron, but he is definitely starting to put it together now, and he's putting it together at the best possible time. I'm going to actually ID up Nick Bosa as the mic. I don't usually ID up defensive ends as the mic, but I just feel like I have to. Kyron, look at Kyron. Look at Kyron showing up big here in the fourth quarter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Coach is saying single back close PA cross. I like that play. I'm a big fan of that play. We hit Zay Jones on this earlier. And again, not playing conservative. We're playing aggressive. It could be Jones again. And that could be the dagger that we need. Zay J Jordan Love is my guy, man. Jordan Love is my guy, and I'm telling you, watch him in real life, too. I mean, if you watch football, you know this man's been killing it. But watch him in real life. He could be the future for the Green Bay Packers. And if he is indeed the future, a little wounded duck there by Love. If he is indeed the future, how Green Bay, three quarterbacks in like the last three decades, assuming... Jordan Love pans out like Farvin Rogers. How about that? Most teams don't get that lucky. And I love it because, again, I'm a diehard Packers fan. Game's not over. I realize that. But the way that Austin started out in this game, they were looking like all pros, and especially Mariota at that. And we have really, really put the clamps on him here, I would say, from the second quarter on, really. We've really put the clamps on him, made him uncomfortable, He's, of course, Yellow. missed some passes, but it's Mariota. Three. He's going to do that Ready. from time to time. Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett just bull rushed somebody and Rondell Moore with the drop again. And do they punt? Yeah, no, they can't. They, they can't punt. That would be foolish. So they have to go for it. And if they don't get this, I mean, that's definitely ball game. But Rondell Moore going to atone for his previous drop and move the chains. Mariota shotgun again, about four minutes to go here. What does he do? What does he do? Oh, LaMarcus Joyner was there. Very, very close. That is going to be Noah Fan. Need Jay, haven't called James Briner. If you're watching this, my man, he's the rookie out of North Carolina, the subscriber. I see, I saw you catch a pass earlier. You're tight end number two, but don't worry. I'm sure that uh, you will jump Noah Fant in the depth chart here soon enough, I would presume. And that's another good catch there by Cooks, who has really been showing up and showing out this game. We're kind of just playing soft zone coverage, but that's okay. I mean, I'm even if they score a touchdown here, which they probably will crash on. Oh, my God. Are we going to let Marcus Mariota score? Five rushes for 31 yards. I mean, I was going to say, even if they score a touchdown, which, let's be honest, they probably are now. It's fine. I'm okay with it. That was a terrible pass there by Mariota. There actually is more time than I would actually like there to be. So Cordero Patterson. Bam. Oh, there's a big sack. It's Michael Pierce, the big man. We had great. I think he was looking for Patterson the whole time. And we had great coverage on Patterson. He was never able to find him in another misfire. This is why. This is why. If you're the Austin Lumberjacks, you want 
Anthony oh, Richardson boy. on your team because Marcus Mariota does miss passes. That much is true. He does miss passes. What's he going to do on this one? Can't really roll out. Almost a sack. We get to Marcus Mariota, and that should be ball game. And so this one did get a little bit more interesting. Mario, they actually stopped us, which, whatever. I wasn't really playing too crazy. And there's Miles Garrett. Two sacks now. Love to see it. And Mariota and the boys were actually able to rip off a huge couple gains to get all the way down to the goal line. But that sack from Garrett might have just sealed it and a drop from Patterson. And that should be, I mean, Eaton, no matter what happens here, they're down by 12. They would have to score, get an onside kick. I mean, crazier things have happened, of course. But Miles Garrett's got his X Factor activated. And Mariota can't seem to complete a, a pass. But there it is. And that is actually the touchdown from no fan. But, I mean, barring an onside recovery, which could happen, and I would be highly, highly, highly upset, that'll be ball game. All right, guys, don't make me raise my blood pressure, please. Just recover this onside kick. Let's get out of Austin with the W and... Wait, excuse me? Excuse me? Oh, Randall. And I would be highly, highly, highly upset. Highly upset. Highly upset. You fool. You're supposed to be on the hands team. Oh, my God. Randall Cobb touched it. So the ball did not need to travel five yards. Randall. If we lose this game, my brother, I'm just saying you're cut. Instantly cut off of this roster. Only 32 seconds. They need a touchdown, but they do got two timeouts. And I can't even believe that we're in this situation. Randall freaking Cobb. What is wrong with you? Why would you do that? My life is flashing before my eyes here. Somebody please tackle him. Oh my God, dude. How is this even happening right now? This makes zero, literal zero sense. This 17 seconds can't take off the clock long enough, man. I mean, it really makes no sense. It really, really makes no sense. Ooh, Miles Garrett was back there. But this clock just can't take off quick enough. It can't take, can't take off quick enough, man. I'm telling you. Oh, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Keep him in bounds. Keep him in bounds. Oh, they got one play. They got one play. They got one play play seven seconds if they get it it's ball game if they don't get it we win this game was not supposed to be this close man all right so randall cobb is cut randall cobb is cut from the team <laughs> I mean, there's no way that I'm even having this conversation with you guys right now. All that for this. All that for this. This is how, uh, I mean, unless, yeah, not going to happen on a kick return. Wow. All we had to do, but you know what? Look, hear me out. This is Madden. I've been playing Madden for a very long time. I record two different series and tell me if I'm lying. When a team gets in a spot where they have to drive downfield and go hurry up offense, they just, it's like impossible. 401 yards, okay? 401 yards. This man had like a buck 90 
going into the fourth quarter. F Madden, dude. F Madden. I, I'm so mad right now. I, I can't believe we lost that game. Jordan Love played great. Kyron Williams, David Montgomery, whatever. I do not even care because I'm just so... Rondell Moore. He caught his first pass in like the third quarter. I can't even believe this. Cannot even believe this. Can't believe they won. Hold on. I got to check on my man. Where's he at? Where's he at? James Briner, one reception, six yards. Okay, it's fine. Rookie first game of the NFL. But wow. Absolutely. Just wow. Look, and you guys thought I was playing. Let me tell you what. This is how we get down in the SFL. Randall Cobb. 80K in cap room. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'll take it. That drop that you had on the on the outside kick just netted me 800k in cap room this is how we get down in the sfl i don't care i'll sign an, another receiver if i have to but randall cobb is gone so who will pick him up i don't know let me go ahead and sim to next week so we can check on the stats of some of our subscribers here virginia beach blues absolutely crushed the rio de janeiro redwoods question is how did yeezy fuentes do in this game let's go over to receiving and didn't touch the rock in this game not quite sure what the blues are doing with their scheme should have definitely definitely touched the rock i gotta make sure go look at their roster and make sure that he is uh in the place that he needs to be because they definitely shouldn't be not targeting him in that game i will check to make sure if they like the depth chart needs ordered or something like that and if so make sure to add him in make sure things are right they have yeezy as wide receiver number three we're gonna go ahead and just bump can i order i can't order their depth chart okay well it should be fine i mean wide receiver three should definitely still get some touches for sure michael jakin though and the antlers again let me know if i'm pronouncing that last name right i hope that I am. They did get the dub over the Memphis River Hogs. And let's see if my man Michael saw any action. No, they got Herbert. Yeah. Herbert is the starter. And then Teddy Bridgewater is there. But Jaken is higher than Bridgewater. So that shouldn't be an issue. But with Jay Herbo, I mean, unless he gets injured, may be tough to get some playing time. So I can keep you on this team if you want me to. Or if not, I can always move you to a different team. Let me know. But, uh, Hey, that's the first episode of the SFL, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I can't believe we lost that game, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll rebound against the Oakland Wizards, I presume, next episode. But that is going to do it for me tonight, as always. I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.